Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the NJ First podcast. My name is Ryan McDonald. I have another congressional candidate guest joining me today, George Song, running for Congressional District 5 up in North New Jersey. That's Bergen County, Sussex County, and Passaic County. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, John, or George. Sorry. No worries. Thanks, Ryan, for having me. Really pro pleasure to be here. And I'm no stranger to Congressional District 5. That's where I got active in with New Jersey First. NJ first, but also I lived my whole life in Warren County. Warren County was newly redistricted out into CD7. So up in CD5 is where you're at. I was with Frank Pallada in 2020, took on John McCann, defeated the county ballot line with Warren County and Sussex County and Passaic against Bergen. And again, in 2022, it was Nick DiGregorio who got the Bergen line. But again, Frank Pallada defeated him in the primary. It looks like there's once again a primary for the Republicans in CD5. I love it. And uh, I would just like to introduce you to NJ First viewers. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for Congress in North New Jersey. Sure. Well, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to your show. Um, hello, NJ First peeps. Uh, my name is George Song. I am running for Congress in CD5 here in New Jersey. It's really a pleasure to be here. Just a little bit about myself, just to give you some background information. Um, I was born in New Jersey, in Bergen County, in Hackensack, back when it was Hackensack Hospital. Uh, so I was born there, grew up in Bergen County, Bergen County my whole life, lived in Primus. I came back to Primus about five, six years ago to uh, just kind of start a family because I love Paramus. I love the community here. Um, I am a small business owner. Uh, I am a father of a two-year-old. He just turned two uh, last weekend, so that was that's nice. great. Married to uh, my wonderful wife. She's amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just living the dream, man. I'm living the dream of being uh, a father and a husband to my family. Um, uh, but, you know, the last few years have been kind of difficult with regards to what's going on in New Jersey and, and in this country. And so um, once I had my son and my family, a whole lot of things changed in my in my environment, in my in my purview of of things. Um, uh, I'm a dad now. Right. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I have um, two really big uh, important responsibilities uh, in my life is to take care of my family, my wife and, and my son. And uh, just seeing what's going on in just New Jersey in general um, with regards to um, what happened during COVID, closing all the schools and then implementing this crazy New Jersey curriculum. It just really I, I was getting just to be frank, pissed off. You know, I, I just didn't like what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so I threw my hat into the ring um, for uh, Board of Education in Paramus. Um, oh, nice. And uh, I, I won. I beat two incumbents. I got 3,000 votes. Uh, no one knew who I was, but they connected with me with regards to my platform and what I was running for. And basically what it was is I was running for our students and for parental rights. Uh, students don't have a say in what um, you know they're going through in school, and we need people uh, to step uh, step up and really take a stand for students because um, they need they they need protection. Um, so that's what I I've done. Uh, elected to the board of education. I'm also a firefighter in Paramus. Um, last year, I went wow. to oh, uh, almost 300 calls last year, um, 60 plus calls this year. So I'm very active in the fire service. Um, I'm also an auxiliary police officer and a special law enforcement officer in Paramus. So I, uh, I partake in my civic duty in that uh, respect in protecting uh, the citizens uh, and the residents of Paramus, New Jersey. And I'm also a uh, worship leader at my church. I've been doing um, uh, worship leading for wow. over 30 years. And uh, so uh, I'm doing that as well. So when I, s I don't need to stand on the top of the rooftops to and proclaim that I care. You know, um, a lot of people who are running, um, they, they just say, I care, I care, I care. And, uh, you know, I'm not about that. I, I want my actions to show that I care. Right. Um, because anybody can talk, talk is cheap, right? You, we see it every single day. We see it on the news. We see it when we go see potential candidates who are running for office. They talk the talk, but seldomly do they actually walk the walk. And I just wanna show people, look, 
hey, this is what I bring to the table. This is what I'm doing for our communities. Uh, this is uh, how I how I show I care. And if that resonates with you, then, you know, support me. And if it doesn't, then I don't know what to say <laughs> uh, because um, that that uh, that's how I how I show our care. So um, so I'm involved in the community. I really am. Um, I care about it. And uh, just all the nonsense that's going on now in, in politics um, has really been on my mind, you know, and, um, you know, this year I, I was like, you know, in my heart. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a strong Christian, you know, so at least that's how I think I am. And, you know, I'm, when I pray and when I when I pray uh, to God and, you know, he, he always placed a burden on my heart, like about like maybe stepping up and trying to do more and more and more. And and so I decided, hey, let's uh, talk to my wife. I got her blessing. I got my family blessing. And uh, I decided, hey, let's put my name into the ring to run for Congress as a Republican candidate. And uh, let's see where it goes. And so I've been uh, running as a Republican candidate for maybe about eight weeks or a little over eight weeks or so. I think the response has been amazing. Um, you know, um, uh, in the pol in the Burn County uh, Policy Committee meeting, where they only invite policy committee members to come and vote uh, for. Um, possible candidates who could be the recommended candidate for the Burn County Convention. Right. And, you know, we can talk about the party line thing, too. That's going yeah. on in Jersey, too. But, um, um, you know, I I got 21 votes. The other person who's running, who's still in the race, got 28 votes, you know, and she's been around for three plus years. I was by that time only around for a couple of weeks, okay. but I got 21 votes. The differential was seven votes, you know, so um, um, and then I won the Passaic County line. You know, uh, as someone who didn't know who I, no one knew who I was. Um, so this tells me that my message and what I bring to the table is resonating with people. Um, and I think people are smart enough that when they hear someone talk and then when they hear that someone talk about the issues and the concerns that they have, um, they trust their gut. Their gut tells them something. And, um, and I think they understand where I'm coming from and they, they trust me. Um, and so that's, you know, that's this whole last few weeks. That's what I've been doing. I've been running around all over uh, trying to um, get more people to know who I am. And also I've been doing a lot of conversions too. Well, we can probably get into this later on. Um, actually, I'll wait sure. because this is probably sure. a question that you have. But that's and basically where I'm coming from with regards to uh, running for Congress. Awesome. And we're definitely going to go right into that next question. But uh, your story, thank you so much for sharing that. And the uh, the personal side of it, I can relate 100%. Um, and your actions prove your worth. You know, my name and NJ First has been drugged through the mud so many times. But again, doing things like this, your actions, I agree, prove um, your worth. Just like how you said you're a firefighter. That's amazing. You're a spiritual leader. These are the people who need to run for elected office. Uh, Darius Mayfield said it the best. That was that's how it was intended to when the founding fathers wrote it. It wasn't just for all these lawyers, which now we have a lawyer class running for all the uh, elected official positions. But that was awesome that you said all that. Uh, I hope no matter what, you stay as a leader in New Jersey. And let's go right into what I've never seen while I was doing NJ first. I went to school, Rutgers, Newark, graduated in 2015 for political science. I've never seen this. You uh, registered 600 plus Democrats over to Republicans. Now, before uh, you tell us all about that, I will give credit to Bergen County Republicans, um, other county Republicans in New Jersey who have registered a lot of Republicans. But I don't know if they're necessarily switching from Democrat to Republican. It's just newly registered. Um, and to put a cherry on the top. Morris County, Morris County Republicans in two years registered only 200. You you beat a whole county GOP <laughs> in a week. Um, let's just hear your uh, experience with registering these Democrats in certain communities that now are Republican. And uh, yeah, let's hear about it. Sure. Yeah. Well, before I get into that, I just want to say thank you for what you are doing with uh, your organization and um I just want to encourage you to keep on doing it. Um, I know you've been dragged through the mud. I know you've been, you know, thrown left and right, given punches here and there. But you know what? 
Uh, we need more people like yourselves, like younger people who have the passion and the drive and the curiosity to learn about this whole political process and to share that with others, like in the ma in, in masses is just so, so important. Look, I'm not a politician. Um, I, over the last eight, nine weeks or so, I've learned a tremendous amount of things that I had no clue. I had no clue. And there's no primer on this. There's no one here holding my hand and walking me through and teaching me. It was basically, I had to do all the research myself. I had to do all the discovery um, and, and the investigations myself to just try to find out what do I have to do? Because there was no one there to really help me. Even when I, you know, you know, when I submitted my letter of intent, um, you know, the which was due on February 1st, I submitted it January 31st. That next day on the 1st, I received a phone call from some people from the BCRO telling me not to run for Congress, yeah. uh, basically telling me to run for commissioner. And they didn't even ask me, like, why are you running for Congress? You know, because running for Congress is not an easy decision to make, you know? So it might have been nice to just be like, hey, George, why are you running? Like, Mm -hmm. Like, tell me about it, you know, and no one ever did. They just told me, don't run for Congress, run for commissioner. We're supporting the other person. Um, mm -hmm. And you know what? That really pissed me off because it's like, who are you to tell me what not to do? You know, I have as much of a right as you do. If you were born, American. I was born here. I'm an American citizen. You know, and 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 this type of bullying, look, it's been going on my whole life. You know, I'm a little older than you. I'm I'm 45, okay, so I'm I'm a lot older than you. Um, but when growing up in elementary school, you know, there weren't that many people that kids that looked like me, right? Um, so I was called all the negative, you know, the 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 racist remarks. I was made okay. fun of. I was bullied. I was even attacked. You know, I've gone through all that, and um. When I went to these Republican, the Bern County Republican groups, the organizations, I saw the same thing. It's like um, they're great people there, but it's like there's not hmm. there's no they one that learn. looks <laughs> like me. And you guys have been saying that you've been reaching out to right. the other minority communities, the Asian communities, the Korean community, as I am a Korean American. But if you are, why isn't anyone showing up? I mean. The ballot in Bern County is in Korean. Okay. So that must tell you, that tells everyone that there is a large Korean population in Bern County. And you say repeatedly that you're concerned for the Korean community, the Asian community, and you're so concerned for them and you're reaching out to them, but no one shows up to the meeting, you know? And mm -hmm. that's when I was like, okay, you know what? You guys probably aren't doing what you say you were doing. Right. And for me, I just wanted to say, here, let me be an example. Let me show you guys that it can be done if you actually just put some work into it. And so I put it upon myself as my mission uh, to convert, uh, not just just bring new people to, to vote, but actually convert. Because I think maybe if I can convert Democrats to Republicans, it's, it's actually gaining two right two votes mm -hmm. because the democratic party loses one vote and the republican mm -hmm. party gains one vote so um so that's what i've done i've done that to um reach out to my community um uh, because i have access to that community i go to a large fairly large korean church i have many friends who are in other korean churches too and i am plugged into the community through uh, my uh networking and uh, friends and uh, in the community as a business owner who who does a lot of work with the Asian community. So I said, here, let's do this. Let's go into it and let's show them what we can do. And I just put in the hard work, man. It's it's not an easy thing. I know it's not an easy thing, but if we want to get something done, we have to do the dirty work, which is you know not breaking laws or anything, but getting our hands dirty, going into the communities, talking about asking questions like, why are you Democrat? Why aren't you Republican? And that's one of the questions that, that I asked to every single person is why are you registered as a democrat <laughs> and there wasn't really no good answer it's not like uh these koreans who are registered as democrats are biden lovers it's not mm -hmm. that at all it's really what it comes down to is that the democrat party reached out to them very in a very good way like they reached out to them 
and they brought them in, which the Republican Party didn't do. That was a <laughs> failure, you know, um, because, you know, a lot of the people who come here, like my parents who came here legally, right, they mm -hmm. immigrated here legally in the 70s, um, they came here and they they followed the laws. And why did they come here? Why did they immigrate to the United States? Because they knew it was the greatest country on earth. Uh, there was many ample opportunities, whether it was for business, you know, or for a career to start a family because of safe neighborhoods and having access to very good education, um, to achieving the American dream, right? To be able to um, worship um, what, in whatever faith that they want to worship in, in a, in a free way, in a way that wouldn't they wouldn't be um, attacked, right? So um, those are the fundamental tenets of the Republican Party, right? <laughs> I mean, mm. and and that's how I was able to convince people to switch party. You know, like let's switch party so that <laughs> we can actually get someone that you know I you, I look like you. A seat okay. at the table, right? Um, because Asian communities in general have been promised so many things by politicians, um, and uh, you know, politicians that come out, they they come out for the photo op, they say the nice things that everyone wants to hear, but at the end of the day, they don't fulfill their promises. And I think a lot of people are um, just fed up; they're tired of the of these lies and. They want to actually get things done, and you see that a lot going on um, with uh, with Andy Kim down in South right. Jersey. He's running for Senate. You know, he's an, he's a Korean American as well. He's on the other party, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, but you know, it uh, beyond like Democrats or Republicans or Independents. I think a lot of people still, you know, they 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 support people who who they're um similar to you know um and i don't think that's a bad thing um mm -hmm. uh some people say oh well you're making it cultural and blah 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 but that's how america is right when people come to america they they seek their group of people why because that's mm -hmm. how they can continue eating the foods that they like right <laughs> that's how they can uh communicate because people who come here don't speak english fluently um so that's how many people congregate. That's what happened to the Italians, the yeah. Irish, right? Back in the day. And it's always going to happen that way. So, and when people like expats move to other countries, you know, um, expats, they seek each other out, right? Um, so that's just human nature. Um, so I said, cool. let's go, let's, let's get that low hanging fruit, right? And just show people that this can be done through hard work, and spending a little bit of time and you know that 600 number actually yesterday uh today's april 11th so uh, april 10th was the last day to submit these voter part party you know change right. forms in burn right. county and so i had an extra 184 forms that um that we submitted okay. yesterday so in total we're probably at the 800 mark or something like that and let me just look at an email because i just saw an email that was uh, sent out by by someone and uh they said in the first three months of 2024 704 democrats switched their republican party and i was responsible for over 600 of those i was just about <laughs> so, to say if not so if not um, or something. so you know what like um, Feels good, doesn't it? Uh, hey, look, I'm not doing this for any fame or anything. I'm, I, I'm tired of losing. I'm just tired yep. of losing. I want to win again. And so, why am I doing this? I'm doing this to uh, not get fame. I'm doing this to support our local candidates. That's why I'm doing this. Because when you look at the local races, right, mm -hmm. um, the differential in between winning and lo losing is not that many votes, right? It's 25 votes, 50 votes, maybe 100 votes. If right. we can change you know, these people in, in these towns um, you know, from Democrat to Republican, then you don't think we can win? I think we can definitely win, uh, especially this year, right? This is a presidential year. Many people are going to come out to vote and participate. They're tired of what's going on in the economy, whether it's nationally, whether it's in our state or even locally, and they want change. This is an opportune time to be doing this. Um, there's a guy that everyone, you guys definitely know Scott Pressler, right? He's doing right. A, he's doing something like this on a much, much grand, grander scale, right? In Pennsylvania and Michigan and all these, I don't, 
I don't know how he does it, uh, but yeah. he's doing it right. And and I even I even he was on a uh, a uh, X space last night, which I participated in uh, just nice. a little bit. And um, he he said great job to me, which is cool. <laughs> he sent me a message, um, and but I was like, hey S Scott, come over to New Jersey too. You know, I mean, yeah, we're we're in a district that's more Democrat than Republican, <clears throat> and that's how they gerrymandered it. That's how they redistricted it. But um, you know, we can scare we can scare the we can scare the incumbent, right? We can scare him because um, mm -hmm. I'm actually flipping the Democrats to Republican, you know? So, um, and, and now we, we go after the independents and we keep going after the Democrats all the way up to, you know, November. And let's, let's see what happens. Um, he, they should be scared, a little mm -hmm. bit scared, maybe not too much. You know, everyone says, Oh yes, so much money, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you have so much money, but um, I don't think it's really, you know, money is important. Yes, of course, money is important, but, I think if you can get to the root cause and and the reason and the reasoning behind why people vote or or just to get to that you know that that seed that's in their hearts that makes them just want to say oh what well, you know I, I will vote for you um um things can change and so I'm op optimistic about what's happening right now and let's see where this takes us. Let's see where this takes us because I think we're doing a really great job and I want to encourage your viewers um you know, you don't have to do 800, right? Or a hundred a week, right? You just do one or two, do yeah. one or two a week. But like everyone, everyone does one or two a week. Like you don't think we'll change the tide here. You don't Even think family we'll members, right? Family members. Yeah. Start, mm -hmm. start uh, people that's start close small. to you, your family right. members, people at your school, people at your workplace, people at your church or your place of worship. I mean, you start there and, you'll discover how there's just, it just builds into like, you know, tumbleweed, right? When, when I used to go mm -hmm. to Texas for business and I never thought these tumbleweeds were Existed. real. Like right. <laughs> they were like cartoons, but I actually yeah. saw it in like Texas. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is real. And they don't start like that big, right? They start a little bit. Oh, and I didn't even know. The, the wind is blowing and it picks Makes up sense. all the other things and it gets into something that big. This is what we can do we can create a movement um and you know it's they, they they don't know about us now but it's okay they don't have to know about us because <laughs> they'll know about us when we win right <laughs> that's the whole point and and so um you know get out there i encourage you guys um you you have you all have an important part to play in this um in this manuscript right in this in this journey called life and uh if you are tired of what's going on and you want to make a change, do something, you can absolutely do it. Because it's not just about one person making a change. It's about groups of people coming together, showing power in unity um, that can actually affect great, great change. Great. Thank you so much for explaining all that, all the work that you have done already in such a short amount of time. Last year, I believe, 2023, we had Scott Pressler come to New Jersey one event was Morse County. One event was Bergen County. It was good. He, you know, he uh, riled up the support, but New Jersey's not in play for Donald Trump. So he's in Pennsylvania. So it is up to us. We have America First Republicans who I hope are uh, planning to do all this. But just to uh, comment on all that that you said, um, I can't believe there's no New Jersey media taking up the story that you did this. I hope that somebody would report on that. You, you would think that the leftist liberal media, like you said, would try and make money and hone in on the Korean American changing from Democrats to Republican, but we'll see if that happens. And um, also with Scott Pressler, you mentioned now a hundred percent and I'll take your criticism and double it even about how, the Republicans were playing that identity card politics that the Democrats do so well at, but a little late, even with the South Asian community, which they're, I guess, broad broadening the spectrum um, because they want to include as many Asian populations. But for yours specifically, we were talking about Korean American and look how successful you were. You know, if you actually just do the work, you don't start late or you just don't post on social media, you know, saying that you're going to do it with TP USA, something like that. <laughs> you go on the ground and you actually do it do it. That's, uh, I commented legendary that you did. It's borderline bad ass what Ugh. you did. I've never seen it. Um, yeah. but to put a cherry on this one as well, um, the, 
vote by mail, which Bob Auth in Bergen County and America First Republicans are going up and down the state telling people we have to do this in order to have a chance. You know what, what we also have to do? We have to register people and change Democrats or Republicans. So you're ahead of the game. If you had anything else to say on that before we go to the next question. Hey, look, I think vote by mail is important. Um, I think um, the way I look at it is if we can get more people to vote by mail, then that frees them up to actually get other people to come out to vote on uh, on the election day. Right. So um, yeah, one point. I think I think like, look, the vote by mail, everyone there, there are people who complain like, oh, I lost mm -hmm. because of the vote by mail and blah, blah, blah. Look, that's how we have to play the game. That's the law. Right. I mean, you, if you want to change the law, then instead of complaining about it, get elected. Right. Get into office so that you can change the law. Right. But um, this is how it is right now. And this is how we have to play the game. And so we have to think of either how do we do it? as good or even better than the Democrats. And number two, are there any other ways? And I'm I'm trying to do the other way, right? Is trying to actually flip people from Democrats to Republicans. And here's here's my here's my um, you know, what I'll say is like those of you candidates, you local candidates, you candidates who are uh, preparing to run for next year, um, whether it's legislative or gubernatorial, right? Um, if you need help, call me, you know, like reach out to me. Um, there's already been a few um, um, people who have reached out to me already today, um, uh, just saying that, you know, they would like their my help. And look, I've got the, I've got the, the manpower. I've got young, young, uh, excited uh, high school uh, kids nice. who, who want to come and canvas neighborhoods. So um, let me know, let me know how it can help. And Maybe I can't help. I don't know, but at least reach out to me. Let's figure out some, uh, create a game plan and what we can do, uh, and bring more people to the table. Because uh, if we bring more people to the table, then we will absolutely win, right? If uh, we bring more Indian Americans to the table, if we bring more mm -hmm. Muslims to the table, um, if we bring more Jewish, uh, uh, Jewish Americans to the table, right? Um, I'm sure they're not happy with what's going on right now. And also um, how the Democrat party isn't really taking a stand, right? Um, so uh, look, let's see what we can do. Um, at the end of the day, I, I don't want to fight with anyone, right? I want to bring people together, unify, create some hope so that we can actually change what's going on. Because if we go at the rate that we're going right now, we're going to be in, I don't know, we might, we might be in really big trouble, right? Because mm -hmm. no one in Congress, everyone's fighting, right? It's so extreme. Everyone from this side, this side, they're fighting and fighting, fighting. And when you're fighting, you don't get anything done, right? Um, yeah. one person mentioned on a space yesterday, uh, maybe they should be on commission. <laughs> maybe they should be on commission. <laughs> only patients, right? So they only get paid if they get actual things done. Stuff done. Um, hey, that sounds like yeah. a good idea, right? Um, so look, uh, in order to get things done, though, we have to participate. We, we can't be sitting on our couches complaining. We have to get out and do whatever we can, whether it's canvas the neighborhood or whether it's help, um, um, making phone calls or whether it's giving a little like five, ten dollars here to to help fundraise for a candidate that, that you believe in. Right. Grassroots campaigning. This is what we have to do. Um, you know, I don't have a tremendous amount of money, but what I do have is the will and the determination that no one can take away from me. Right. And and I'm learning also the know how, the knowledge. Um, and this is something that no one can take away from me. Right. So. Uh, let me help you guys. Let me help and, and, and win and flip some of these seats in local races, because then when we do that, we create a very strong foundation from which we can build upon. Right. Um, if we build anything on sand, it'll fall down. Right. But if we have mm -hmm. a strong foundation where we have great local leadership, local Repo Republican candidates or, um, um, you know, mayors and council people who are doing the right thing. Um, um, at the local level, then we can build upon that. And and maybe next year we have a Republican governor again. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Anything is yeah. possible. Even next 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 year is going to be just as crazy uh, yep. regarding politics. But yep. um, that's great information and words of advice that you just said for uh, anybody that wants to be a leader, to be honest, when it comes to their community or state. Now, what I would like to talk, and I know uh, you're pressed for time, but we have some left. 
if you're elected, there are some big issues. You'll definitely need that will and determination, like you said, uh, because we just went through the pandemic and all of Congress basically, you know, uh, took the knee. Uh, mm -hmm. We also went through the, I say, take knee, the Black Lives Matter uh, riots mm -hmm. and Antifa and everyone, you know, we need really strong people elected. So we're going to talk about what I saw you share was John Stossel's uh, video that he had. It was the uh, it was outlining the authoritarian COVID lockdowns that we all went through. Now, mm -hmm. just for viewers, uh, everyone, all the boomers, all the American boomers tell me that Walter Cronkite was the last journalist. Mm -hmm. I like John Stossel. John Stossel is a pretty good guy. Um, but how about we hear about your opinions, uh, what we went through with the authoritative lockdowns um, and also the aftermath. And we'll just touch on a little bit because I know we can talk about that forever. Oh, yeah. Well, look, COVID really killed us, right? Um, um, locking down everything uh, that took away our freedoms. Like we could not go and meet with other people. We couldn't go to church and meet in a group. Right. Um, there are people who couldn't go outside and they'd be in their car and they'd get ticketed for being outside. Um, that is how ridiculous it was. And, you know, what surprised me the most um, was that people weren't fighting against that. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, I think it was because they were very scared. Right? Yep. Um, the media did a great job. Politicians in office did a great job scaring everyone, right? Every single day you'd see uh, that guy Cuomo <laughs> on mm -hmm. the news talking about, you know, you got to get your vaccine, this or that. This. Um, but for me, like, I, I was like, uh, why would I inject something that's never been tested <laughs> into my body? Um that just does not seem right. And I think a lot of people thought that too, but then also a lot of people were scared about that as well because, well, then I can't do this or I can't do this or I can't work, yeah. right? I can't right. I can't be in a job and I need to Oof. support my family. So this is what they did to scare us. And um, it just ruined everything. Look at what happened with schools, right? They shut down schools. What happened to student learning loss? They ruined a generation of kids because they could not really learn at the optimal levels for like two years. When right. you look at, when we, on, on the Board of Ed, right? When we look at the data um, and we look at the data um, for student scores and they're down tremendously, they're down like over 40 points. It's it's crazy. Um, but the people in power are okay with it, right? The people in power were okay with it. Um, you drive oh, down, you know, Pramus is, has three highways to like Route 17 and Route 4. Okay. Um, there are still storefronts that are empty. That just yep. amazes my mind, right? It's 2024 and there's still places that are empty. Um, how many businesses, small businesses suffered, right? The Walmart didn't suffer, Target didn't suffer because you know, oh, you're, you're allowed to go to Walmart and Target, but the small businesses, you know, I'm a small business owner too. Um, for me, I'm in the insurance business and so okay. look, uh, I was hurting tremendously. You know, I was hurting my people who were working for me were hurting, right? Because we couldn't do our jobs. Um, and so that I think in and of itself was just like COVID just destroyed everything. And um, the people in power, like, what do we know now? Vaccines don't work, right? You got to get a booster shot every year or whatever. You know how crazy that is? Like you have to inject yourself with more stuff and more stuff. Um, I know I know people who had, um, when they were pregnant, they were told that they needed to get vaccine shots and and some of their kids just like, they have problems, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, it's very, very sad. Um, when my wife was, my wife was present, pregnant, um, I was like, hell, hell no, no, we're not getting any shots. Right. No, we're not. Um, you you had your kid right during the time of the pandemic, yeah, probably. Yeah, my my wife was pregnant. Um, we got you know, we got so we fell for the trap and we got the first shot. Okay, mm -hmm. um, because obviously we were just like, uh, you know, she's scared. You know, we don't know what's going on, and I have parents who are elderly and they're getting shots too, and um, you know, and they're older, so okay, I understand that you need to protect yourselves because uh, you know you're you're older and your immune system 
your immune system may be weaker. But so I took the first shot. And then after I took that first shot, I got like deathly ill. I was like mm -hmm. sick for like two weeks. And then I was like, never taking this, never taking the second shot or whatever shots ever again. And I, this is coming from a person who, for me, I, I've never gotten a flu shot. Like I don't. Yeah. Me neither. And wasn't it weird that during COVID, they were not, they weren't talking about flu cases, right? They were just talking about <laughs> COVID cases, it like disappeared. Or so, and everybody who was in the hospital, hospital was uh, diagnosed uh, to be in the hospital due to COVID. COVID. Right. When it was the they would test them. They would test them. Be like, oh, it came up. Even oh, though COVID. you know yeah. that's not the test. I guess uh, false positives and stuff like that. Exactly. All this, all all the jargons coming back, right? And then people right. kind of have a little trauma because right. of what they and, went through. And um, so I just want people to not forget about this. This happened, you know, two, three, four years ago. Mm. Don't forget about this. Like, please, like, don't forget about this because. This can happen again. If it happened in 2020, everyone thought, oh, this will never happen, whatever. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again if we're not prepared to fight, if we're not prepared to stand up for our rights um, and for our freedoms. We, It's going to happen again. And it's the people who are in power in government, the elitists who feel that the rules and the laws don't apply to them and they only apply to us small people. Um, and it's all about having control. It's all about gaining control over us. And and so, um, yeah, COVID destroyed us. COVID set mm -hmm. us back many, many years. Um, but I think what's great is that the, uh, we are a resilient bunch and we're fighters. I see fighters every single day standing up um, for, for, for rights and uh, and they're being courageous. You know, um, one of my favorite verses, Joshua 1.9, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, say it but you guys look it up um it's a very short verse but it's about being courage right having courage right um if if you believe in something you have to stand up for it like don't be afraid to be shamed don't be afraid to be canceled um you know that's all just like that's fake fear you know it's mm -hmm. fake fear let them come and attack, right? I mean, it's like you got, if you stand up for what you believe in, in your heart, in your gut, in your mind, like you won't fail. Like you will have haters. There's no one, there's no person who is liked by everyone. There's no such person. And it shouldn't be your goal to be liked by everyone. Um, don't mm -hmm. think about what other people may think about you. Just do what you feel is right because that is what you believe in and that is your part of who you are um and and just go for it go, go for it you know with these with and, and that's kind of how i live my life even through covid even through all this and that and getting attacked left and right or whatever it is all the false lies and all the things that's going on i stay true to myself i'm not a perfect person but i try to as a Christian live in excellence, right? Try to do everything that I do in excellence. And I will fail. I will fail. I failed many times in my life, but it's about picking yourself up after those failures, learning, re-examining what happened, how you can work to get better and going after it again. And um, well said. that's that's what I that's what I I, I hope that you guys um, you know apply to your lives. Um, don't don't worry about what they say on you about you in social media. Don't worry about how many followers you get or whatever. Um, it's cause it's not about that. Life is not about that. It wasn't like that, like 10, 15 years ago, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't have all this social media and, you know, <laughs> I'm old when I was in high school, we didn't really even have internet. Like it was dial up. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know I, if you guys uh, even know what that is, but you, Oh we, yes, I'm 31. I'm 31. <laughs> okay. I'm so, you know, but maybe yeah. some of your younger viewers don't know. We had to go on the phone and it was like, nah, 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 and it would collect to America online. And then that was our internet. You know, you guys have access to so much information um, at your fingertips. Your smartphone is a, is a computer, right? But don't make mm -hmm. that be your only source of like gaining information and, and letting that affect your life. Um, take a step back, you know, go outside and play, right? Like when I was growing up, we played outside. We drank water from the garden hose, right? We played nice. outside till nighttime and our doors were open and our moms would say, where are you coming for dinner? Right? Like that, that's how it was. And 
you know where the friends are from where the bikes are in the yeah yeah you see the bikes all over the place you don't care the ice cream man is coming right (laughs) you know um like we no that's well said and 40, 45 years is young if you were elected to Congress as well. Well, there's um, a lot of younger people too in Congress, and I <laughs> wonder how some of them actually got in there. Um, that do actually some of the things that they say. But right. you know what? Um, I think like you know, getting into Congress is, is not going to make or break me. Right? It's um, it's what I can bring to the party. Right? What can I do to help people get elected so that we can actually make change? Because you know, if I get it in, it's not okay. Like what? change will I be able to make, right? It's, I need to, we all need to come together from the local all the way up. Like we, we need to build that foundation. I know I've said this and I'll say it again. We need that strong foundation. We, we can't just say, I care. We can't just say, walk around and say, la, 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 me, 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 me. No, it's not about me. It's about us. It's about <clears throat> our party. It's about our, our, our nation, citizens of this country, uh, because we need to, set a positive and good and strong example to everyone else around the world because if we don't you know mm-hmm. what we have right now that's what happens right and for new jersey it was one third of businesses in new jersey never reopened after the pandemic hitting those small business owners specifically more than anyone else it's crazy. um just yeah just like uh, you were saying and we can finish up this question with uh, tying in the next question the inflation Uh, and cost of living. Now, uh, a lot of people understand that the Biden policies are causing inflation as well. But Mr. Thomas Massey Jr. is a stalwart, strong individual. He's a congressman from Kentucky, and he was the only person who said no and stood up to Donald Trump and all of Congress when they passed the largest omnibus spending bill in history. It was the Mm -hmm. CARES Act. It was that one that gave everybody $1,200 and Mm -hmm. they basically gave PPP loans to all the companies. Some of them are grants. You didn't have to pay back, but this, this was printing money. Uh, We're $32 trillion in debt now. Uh, Donald Trump, I supported him, uh, voted for him, uh, knocked doors on him. He was the first person I ever voted for, but the debt increased (laughs) under his presidency. Um, so the only question I have, and I asked this to my CD5 candidates, representatives who are mm-hmm. running for Republican uh, previously was, um, do you understand, and I'm sure you do, everyone does, but how would you vote when it comes to our budget and our debt? Um, we got to slash stuff if you ask me. And that yeah, is the look, co- that, that's the reason we're in inflation is we just keep. I think if we had less lawyers and more business people in office, I think a yeah. lot of uh, red tape would be cut out. Um, look, uh, we are in um, how many trillions of dollars of debt right now? Is it like right. 32, 30, right, something like 34, that. 34 trillion dollars in debt, right? <laughs> um, here's what, what I would do. I would first, the first easiest thing that I would do is probably like look at the U.S. Post Postal Service, right? <laughs> because they, you know, they are in about one hundred forty-four billion dollars in debt, right? There is no business whatsoever that can run repeatedly for years and years and years, every year, be in debt. There, there's no business, right? Because they would go out of business, right? <laughs> but you look at the post office, uh, one hundred forty-four billion dollars in debt. I mean, look, um, we, it's you know the people in government, the politicians. Um, you know, you know why they spend money like this um, and send it, it's because it's not their money. Right. Exactly. They don't they don't care about it's like it's not my money, uh, you know, mm-hmm. so I'll send, you know, 60 billion or whatever to Ukraine. I'll send all this money to, you know, that shows that they don't care. Right. Because none of the money is being used for, let's say, our homeless population. Right. Our veterans. Um, yeah. Helping to let's say close our southern border right um it's totally wide open everyone's coming in we know bad people are coming in but no one's doing anything about it um uh, the the government right uh it's just um it's just it's a travesty it's a travesty um it's a travesty like nothing is affordable i don't know if you own your own home or you're renting or you live with your parents but like the younger generation is not going to be able to afford a house in in Burn County, <laughs> and not I don't know, yet. maybe Passaic or not in know, Jersey, <laughs> not in Jersey, right? It, you are not going to be able to because look, there was a house that was sold on my block. I live in a cul-de-sac, um, 
earlier this year sold for almost one million dollars it's not a one million dollar house i'm a licensed realtor right uh i i, I know right um and anyone who isn't even in real estate would know like that's not a one million dollar house but it they, it was it was purchased for almost that amount of money um mm -hmm. so like the people like yourselves or the younger people who are just getting out of college they graduate they have college debt um and they're working at a job where they're not making tremendously amount of money they're making okay money but with that would they, will they be able to actually purchase a home and right. <laughs> what about purchasing a car you can't buy a car like you can't buy a new car it's like mm -hmm. any new car is like 50 60 grand once you put tax on it i mean it's just it's ridiculous it's ridiculous um uh we mm -hmm. they just spend 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 it, it, there's no accountability with regards to what they spend because it's not their money you know, if it was their money, we know we would we wouldn't be at, in a, as much debt as we are today. Mm -hmm. So, it's about electing people who are smart, not greedy, um, not trying to be in politics um, for fame or to get the insider stock trading information so that they right. can trade and become millionaires as politician. Um, no, like, you know, they, we need to make laws and rules for that. We need to get people who are common sense people who understand what it means to be a business owner, who understands what it means to raise a family, to have these monthly payments that they have to make to survive. I mean, groceries, yeah. uh, you go to Costco and it's like a uh, $300 or $400 bill, you know, like you wake up. You, yeah, <laughs> wake, up New wake up New Jersey on Twitter posts that all the time. He goes to the grocery store and posts how much he's spending and being like Republicans, like this should be your mantra when trying to get other people elected. Like the groceries are unaffordable. Hey, I, I got to buy milk for my son. A gallon of milk is five, six dollars. You know, it's like six bucks. Please. Come on. And I can't buy the skim milk. I buy the whole milk, right? That has all yeah. the nutrients. And and sometimes I may even want to buy the organic milk, but that's like eight bucks a gallon. You know, it's mm. like this is how ridiculous it is. You know, when you go and say you want to splurge a little bit and go to McDonald's, you can't, you know, buy a, a meal and it not be like fifteen dollars, <laughs> you know, like it's no like more, fourteen. No more dollar menu. No more. No dollar more dollar menu. menu. Back in the day, meals for me were like, you know, set six bucks. You know, mm -hmm. you get so, you know back in high school we would get cheeseburgers like that two cheeseburgers for a dollar, right? Not anymore. Not anymore. We just we don't have that anymore. And 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 now that the minimum wage is going up, right? In California, it's like twenty dollars an hour. It's probably going to hit the same in New yeah. Jersey and New York soon. Mm -hmm. And and you know, don't be tricked, right? Don't think that if you work in those in in those places that you'll be making more money. What's going to happen is you'll probably lose your job, right? Because this the, the business owner is not going to be able to pay all of you. 15 20 dollars an hour it's just not going to happen so what is mcdonald's yeah. doing they're in, investing a lot in technology and robotics where your meals will now be prepared by machines and they'll mm -hmm. only need a few people just managing those machines and the processes so um you know don't be fooled don't be fooled you're not going to be making as much you might be out of a job <laughs> and i don't know if you have enough time for just one last question um, but, uh, do you have enough time for quick? Yeah, sure. Let's go. All right. Great. So, uh, just, you touched on a little bit, uh, the immigration and I would love just for you to tell NJ first viewers, your opinion on the Ill illegal immigration, but first, um, yourself being a small business owner and, uh, a Korean, Korean American. So from a community of, uh, people who immigrate here, um, we have a lot of college graduates here now, whether or not they're the best smartest and brightest is a different discussion but my generation was whipped into saying you're going to college because that's the only way you're going to get a job and throughout my politics i'm now coming through thomas massey jr Rand paul 
who are speaking about H-1B visas. These are visas given to immigrants who want to come over here legally for white collar. I guess that's what you say, white collar jobs, not the blue collar warehouse jobs that I work. But the way uh, I went to college, you know, um, but white collar jobs, I say, do you think that that is something that we should look at as well, that American jobs should maybe be prioritized for Americans if they're qualified? Look, I think this is, um, it's not a, a clearly black and white issue okay. in, my, in, my, um, in my opinion, um, because a lot of America has benefited from uh, people who've come over with H-1B visas. Um, there are Koreans that come over with, with that, um, with, with those visas. Um, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people from other countries like India who come over for technology, right, um, for engineering and those, those types of things. So, um, I think what we have to always remember is that America is based on like competing, right? On a competitive nature, yeah. where like the best should be the ones who have the jobs, right? It shouldn't be like the DEI or like what's going on. You know, I have a friend who is a pilot and he told me that there's a, like United is hiring people, um, you know, because of their DEI initiative or whatever, hiring people because they're, you know, they're gay or because they're a minority, not because they're like the best qualified. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in a plane um, 30,000 feet in the air being flown by someone who's not the best pilot ever to fly, right? Sure. Um, and so um, there, there, there are, you know, there are pros and cons. Uh, what I can say is, look, I am... I think there needs to be rule, uh, a rule of law, right? That we need to, we are a nation of laws, right? I'm a law enforcement officer, right? So um, we need to follow laws. And what's going on right now is that we aren't following the laws. Like the laws are in place, but no one is following them. And what happens when no one follows the laws? There's chaos. Chaos will, will present itself. We see that not only at the border where there's so much craziness that's going on down there. And like, I don't have to be at the border to know all the craziness that's going down there, right? Like okay. people say, oh, I'm at the border or I've been, we know this, we see this on TV, right? So we know right. there's a problem there. Um, but, we, but we also know we're, we're a border state, right? Every state is a border state. New Jersey, we are a border state. Um, you know, they're shipping, they're, I don't want to say shipping, but they're transporting people <laughs> to to New York and New Jersey. What happened yesterday? Um, there was a video that I saw on X where um, a freelance uh, journalist showed um, all these uh, these migrants, about 150 or so migrants at uh, Port Authority. Right. They're just mm -hmm. dropped off, you know, there, you know. So where are they coming from? They're coming from the southern border. Um, when I see uh, police not being able to. Um, pull over cars or like, you know, go on and enforce the laws. Um, when I see um, people who are get who get arrested, but because of our uh, cashless uh, bail laws in New Jersey, where they're released within like a period of a few hours um, with no reper repercussions whatsoever, mm -hmm. no penalties, what's going to happen? They're going to do the same thing again and again and again and again, right? Um, it, there's no end, right? We have to enforce the laws. Um, I understand why People are coming to this country, right? This is the land of opportunity. I understand that. Um, that's why my parents came here. But they did it in the right way. They did it by abiding with, with the law. Right. And what does it say to those people like my parents who came here, followed the laws, um, who people who right now who are following the laws? What does it say to them who are who are doing it the right way? And we're letting um, migrants come in. We're housing them in um luxury hotels that get paid two, three hundred dollars a night, um, getting ten thousand dollar debit cards and all these other crazy things. What does it say to um, my parents, you know, my right. friends who come here and did the right way, who worked hard, who worked their butts off? You know, it's not easy to get a green card, right? It's not easy to get um, these these visas, right? They have to prove themselves in the places that they work because the, the their employers are the ones that are sponsoring them, right? So mm -hmm. they're not going to just sponsor anybody. They're going to sponsor someone who works their butt off because they want value for for sponsoring that person. So um, it's it's a touchy subject, right? But uh, we have to take a stand and say, look, um, follow the laws, and maybe 
people in Congress have to um, work on um, developing further the immigration laws into this country, like right. creating a better visa program or creating a better process for um, allowing these people to 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 come in maybe there are people who are seasonal workers right who you know who work on the farms well they don't have to live here you know maybe there can be a program for that right where they come in for that portion and then go back right then um when they're off season so <clears throat> there's a lot of things that we can do there are a lot of creative ideas that we can implement but it's just the people in power people in congress that have to want to do that um and, right. and so hopefully if i get the opportunity to be um, the Congress, um, the congressman uh, for CD5, I'd be able to, you know, talk to the people um, in, in office in um, these offices and, and and just say, look, let's create a common, some sort of common sense solution to this problem to address the issues that we have. Because if we go, uh, continue to go in this route, um, we're going to be in uh, worse shape, worse shape. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I really, I really appreciate that perspective. Um, I've learned uh, from listening to you. And throughout the years, I changed my own opinion so many times, even from going from immigration morator moratorium to, okay, immigration moratorium just until we fix the southern border. And even now I can see myself, you know, if we at least chisel a little bit at it at first, it's better than, you know, not doing anything at all. I think uh, that's the I, best yeah. approach. I mean, like when we, we, it's such a big problem that there's no one solution, right? We have mm -hmm. to work at piece by piece, right? Step by step and try to like, attack the problem little by little you know um but we have to get to that point we have to have people that actually want to do this right um mm -hmm. it it doesn't seem like they want to do it or they want to put in other things into these bills that don't have anything to do with immigration and right. so that they get something benefit for themselves you know it's it's just it's crazy it's crazy like like if you think something is a problem you you would think that uh, you'd want to create a law that addresses that problem specifically and mm -hmm. then come and talk about the other problems at hand. But what do and I if, know? If, if nobody knows what uh, or realizes what he's talking about, it's the recent politics that we just keep going through with um, foreign lobby interests and money tied yeah. with our own border security. It's tied with their security. That's what he was talking about, I'm pretty sure. Uh, thank you so much for joining George Song, running for Congress in CD5. That's Bergen County. Passaic County and Sussex County. Thank you for joining the NJ First podcast, a free speech platform. Please tell the viewers where they can find your campaign, donate, or volunteer. Sure, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. Hey, I want to do this again, man. I think we have really awesome. great discussion and we can share. And, and this is, you know, when we create a forum, a place of discussion where we can bounce ideas back and forth in a civil way, we'll be able to get things done. Uh, more informa information about me can be found on my website. It's www.george4nj.com. You give me a call too, 201-500-5744. Send me an email, george4nj at gmail.com. Reach out to me. Let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you, whether it's in your uh, towns or whether if you're running for local office or whatever office it may be. Uh, let's try to work together and try to make some change this November. I think we uh, have a we're in a good place right now where we can definitely, definitely make some changes. Uh, but you guys need to participate. We all need to participate and do our do uh, and and put our left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot forward to get things done. Thank you very much, Ryan, for this time. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hopefully George will join us again. Thank you.